Getting underground utility lines marked before digging is a crucial step in preventing damages to those lines. It also helps keep you safe from harm when digging around utilities such as gas or electric. The first step before beginning any type of digging project is planning. What will the scope of your project be? Digging a foundation for a house? Installing a fence line? Maybe directional boring or telecommunication lines? Or even something as simple as planting a tree? Before you make the call to 811, pick up a shovel or start up a backhoe, there is something you can do to help utility locators save time and relay exactly where you plan on digging. When an excavation site cannot be clearly and adequately identified when submitting a locate request to 811, you, the excavator, are required per state statute to designate the route and or area to be excavated either using white flags or water-soluble white paint. Both flags and paint can be obtained at most local hardware stores for a minimal cost. White lining or pre-marking must be done prior to calling 811 and before the utility locators arrive at your dig site. This pre-marking allows you to properly communicate with the locators the exact area you plan on digging. This way they can focus marking only that area and not an entire property or length of road or land that goes outside of the scope of the job site. And white lining isn't just for professional excavators. It's for everyone, including someone digging in their backyard. It all sounds simple enough, but there are a few guidelines to follow that will help speed things along. Let's show you some examples of how to mark the area of a proposed excavation. Remember, all markings, whether they're paint or flags, must be done in white. The American Public Works Association designates white as the color for any and all proposed excavation sites. Delineate in white the proposed area of excavation using a continuous line. Dots marking the radius or arcs. Dashes marking the four corners of the project. Or dashes outlining the excavation project. Limit the size of each dash to approximately 6 to 12 inches long and 1 inch wide with interval spacings approximately 4 to 50 feet apart. Reduce the separation of excavation marks to a length that can be reasonably seen by the operator's locators when the terrain at the excavation site warrants it. Dots are approximately 1 inch in diameter and are typically used to define arcs or radii and may be placed at closer intervals instead of dashes. When an excavation site is contained within a 50 foot maximum radius or less, it can be delineated with a single stake that is positioned at the proposed center of the excavation. If the excavator chooses this type of delineation, they must convey that they have delineated the excavation site with a single stake at the center of the excavation and include the radius of the site in the notification to the one call center. This single stake is white in color and displays the excavator's company identifier, name, abbreviation, or initials, and the radius of the excavation site in black letters on the stake or with a notice attached to the stake. Trenching, boring, or other continuous type excavations. Mark in white paint the proposed center line of planned excavation using 6 inch to 12 inch by 1 inch arrows approximately 4 to 50 feet apart to show direction of excavation. Mark lateral excavations with occasional arrows showing excavation direction from center line with marks at curb or property line if crossed. Dots may be used for curves and closer interval markings. Stakes or flags excavation markers. Delineate the proposed area of excavation using stakes or flags instead of spray paint to mark radius or arcs, the four corners of the project or when outlining the excavation project. Limit the interval spacings to approximately 4 feet to 50 feet. Stakes or flags provide to illustrate arcs or radii may be placed at closer intervals to define the arc or radius. Stakes or flags are white in color and display the excavator's company identifier, name, abbreviations, or initials. It is recommended that you label your white lined area with something that indicates who the white lines are for. Due to the popularity of white lining in some areas, locators come across multiple white lines by different excavators in the same area. 
Also, it is recommended that you date the white lined area no more than two days prior to calling in your locate to help the locators match up the white lined area to your locate ticket. So the biggest reason why the white lining and labeling the white lining is important to a locator is when a locator gets on site and the locator is looking at white lines, if it's labeled who the excavator is, that really helps us out. The date's very important as well because when you have multiple excavators going through a particular job or the same excavator coming back and they need to add on whatever the case may be, having those dates really dials our guys in to where we need to put our marks. And by doing that, you're going to get a faster return on that job and it's going to be more efficient overall. Using these methods of best practice when whitelining will help speed up the process of having the utilities marked by the operator's locators and will help get your excavation project started on time. For more information concerning safe digging practices, visit nc811.org or commongroundalliance.com forward slash best practices guide.